your real estate real talk. When it comes to the perfect home, most people might think bigger is better, but that could also mean a bigger price tag. So what square footage should you be looking for? And where can we create maybe a feeling of bigger spaces in our own home? Los Angeles real estate agent, Carrie White joining us right now. Hey, Carrie. Hey, good morning. This is such an interesting topic because according to an article in Southern Living, 1,500 square feet is the ideal size. Why do you think that is? Well, you know, people always want more space. If uh, a young couple, not two bedrooms, but three bedrooms, or if there's a couple with a child, they want four to five bedrooms, and that's because they want a home office, they want a bedroom for everybody, they want a gym. But in all reality, this is a lot of space, properties are more expensive, and they end up not being able to really get into something that they want. And research has found lately that if you actually get something that's around 1,500 square feet, you can utilize the rooms in a better way and design it so it's actually extremely functional without that heavy price tag. So we're kind of finding that bigger is not actually better anymore. That's so interesting. The article actually has six ways to help you kind of make the most of the space that you have. The first is to build fewer but bigger rooms. Yeah, I mean, how many times you go to a, a house and they have a guest room or they have a formal dining room? They have rooms that they don't really use. So if you're creating fewer rooms with more space in them, then we can talk about a little bit, a few ways to do that. It actually makes it easier to use 1,500 square feet without having multiple rooms, like you're walking into a very tight space with all these little doors. So there's a lot more functionality when you have fewer rooms in this 1,500 square foot, say, house. Speaking of functionality here, one of the tips that they actually recommend is to merge the kitchen and dining area. We see this oftentimes when there's two rooms for that. When they merge it, the space seems a little more open. Do you recommend that for most houses? Well, I love that. I mean, when people are cooking, they like to enjoy company and chit chat. So when you have a separate formal dining room, you have to walk in there with the food. It's just completely separate. So when you're able to eat and cook and enjoy. I mean, I love a good bar stool set up in the kitchen and it just isn't really the norm to go into a formal dining room. So if you use that whole kitchen as an open space, you know, a lot of times you just sit at the bar when you're eating dinner. Um, it's kind of the new norm for families, especially with how busy everyone is and running around and all the chaos that people are not really using their formal dining rooms often and it's a waste of space. So Carrie, if we're merging those two areas, are we merging the living room or are we keeping that separate? One big murder. <laughs> I, I mean, I have my kitchen and dining room all open to the living room, and I don't love the fact that we can watch TV while we're eating mm -hmm. and cooking. So I personally would separate out the living room. You know, it has different functions, uh, a living room. I know a lot of us grew up with a formal living room and a family room. It's like, what are they calling all these rooms that we have? They, they don't even get used. We weren't even allowed to sit on the couch in our formal uh, living room growing up. So these days, using a distinct living room as a family room, as a cozy room, as a TV room, and using your kitchen separately, it's really a good way to maximize the space and still have a really usable room. Carrie, I hate to throw back our friendship here, but I distinctly remember your living room as a kid <laughs> growing up. It had the step down and it was a separate space for gathering yeah. aside from the kitchen. So like that kind of nostalgia that you want that in your own house. No, it's just a, it's a waste of a room. And especially when you can't sit on the couch, like, what are we doing here? You know, we've got, <laughs> we've got smaller houses, so let's make something we can actually use and have fun in, right? The next way <laughs> to do that is natural light. We hear this all the time. It's really like a catchphrase now, more natural light. What's a good way to make that room feel bigger? You know, I saw an article about this recently, which we may touch on one morning, and there's a lot of really easy ways to create light in a dark space. There's nobody that's going on house tours with me that's like, hey, I want to get a dark, cozy <laughs> space. Everybody wants a lot of natural light. So, of course, windows are really helpful, setting up mirrors where that reflects the light, but really trying to get as much light uh bright colors into a space so you can really make it feel bigger if it's not the biggest one. So skylights are really great if you can put one in, light colored furniture, light colored paint. It makes that, you know, airy and bright atmosphere so you feel like you have more space. And I always say to people when they're like, I only want X amount of space, you can look at properties or see homes that are 1,100 square feet that feel like 1,500 and 1,500 that feel like 1,000. Mm. So it's really so much in the way these rooms are laid out, you know, the numbers just a number and you have to be able to use some of these tools to creatively maximize that that space that you have well, one of the things that we always talk about here you can't forget about is that outdoor space how can you make that feel bigger or an extension of your home 
Right. We love our outdoor space. So getting some nice, big sliding glass doors that open, and of course, your market lights, but being able to use an indoor outdoor flow. So you have to have some nice patio furniture out there, maybe an outdoor barbecue, um, you know, outdoor dining area. Maybe you can do some of your cooking out there and entertaining like an indoor outdoor flow. But there's a lot of places that feel like with that open patio space that your whole yard, your whole living area is that much bigger because it's all open. The glass doors, you can see it all. So it's a really good way to make your home feel bigger and actually utilize your back patio as another formal dining room, so to speak. Yeah, and one of the things that people maybe forget to, to rethink how they use their garage, especially in California. The tips are just, you know, piling up here today. We've got so much good stuff. But a garage itself, you know, you go in, there's spider webs and it's not usable. People have so much stuff packed in there that they're not even using it to park their cars. It's very common, especially here on the west side of LA, for people not to use their garages. Half the time, which is probably similar back there, their driveways are so tiny for horse and carriages, they can't even get their SUV down to their garage. So people are using this space, like example, like this picture, putting in actual shelves, storage, putting in some racks above so you can put all this stuff that we have in there and then using that space like a craft room or a home gym or a home office or a man cave to actually get this whole bonus area space that you weren't using to park your car in anyways. So that creates another additional space. I mean, it's so often I see these homes that open up into this beautiful patio, well used. There's a place to park your car, a lovely converted mm -hmm. garage. You know, nothing that's not actually physically converting it, but just putting in a little AC and a, a nice epoxy floor, and you've got yourself like a 2,000 square foot home like that. Maybe next week, Carrie, we'll talk about the dance routines we learned in your separate living room space as a child. <laughs> The formal dancing space. <laughs> the formal dancing space. <laughs> All right, you guys, you can get more advice from Carrie, of course, every single week here on Current. You can follow her on Instagram at Carrie and Carrie Ann. Subscribe to her YouTube channel as well. That's Carrie White Real Estate. We'll see you next week.